along with that very rapid advancement in science and technology that has not always correlated with an advancement in spirituality. On the contrary, we see that that rapid advancement in what we call civilization, and I quote unquote, Hadara, civilization, it seems that civilization as we call it today almost lacks purposely the aspect of spirituality out of it. It leaves it out because as we have called civilization a matter or a collection of materialistic things. Okay. Therefore, people judge things based on the logic and the reason. Oh, this is not right. This is right. You should not do that. You should do that. Why don't you do this? Because it's illegal. Or oh, that's not right to do because social implications dictate as such. Sigmund Freud, the Austrian psychiatrist or psychologist, if you want to call him. Freud, known. He came up with this idea, if, if, if somebody can hold the children, the reason is because I don't prepare what I say and if lots, I, I have such a weak uh, concentration abilities, it's my weakness, not your weakness. So if there's lots of noises, then it disturbs my train of thought. And another one, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ali Sayyidina Muhammad. And a third one also, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Freud, for example, in order to try to understand how do we build the human being, he said, well, the human being in, in the intellect of the human being, there are three sides. There is the id, the ego, and the superego. The id is the pleasure principle. What does that mean? I want. Al-Islam wants to educate us. Al-Islam put desire within the self. We all have desires. And Al-Islam wants you to fulfill your desire, but in the right way. But the self wants to always get that desire satisfied regardless of the way. That's what the id does. The id is based on the pleasure principle. I am not affirming the division of Freud. I'm just giving an example, okay? Not affirming or denying. Put it this way. The id wants you to collect money. Your self wants you to collect money. Halal, haram, it doesn't make any difference. I want more money in my bank account. Get me more money now. So therefore you see people for the sake of satisfying that desire of having a bigger and bigger saving and checking and money. They would do anything and everything. They would collect from here, from there. If they would have to cheat people, they would to get more money. If they have to lie to people, they would to get more money. For the sake of money, people kill people, as you all know. Because that desire is blind. It wants you to satisfy it. It's an addictive desire that requires addictive satisfaction and serious satisfaction and blindness to it. Pleasure principle. The only way you can be pleased is if you have more. The ego, according to Freud, is the reality principle, which means what? It's the part of your brain that says, okay, you know what? You want to collect money? That's fine with me. I have no problem. But listen, if you steal, you might go to jail. So you, you figure out, you, you balance out your sheets. You, you want to steal, but make sure you don't get caught. Because if you do get caught, you'll go to jail. The super ego is the morality principle, is the perfection is the one that tells you, you know what, stealing and collecting money just for the sake of collecting money from right and left and wrong and haram and halal, that is not a good thing. Cheating people for the sake of looking that you're good or making yourself for the sake of your building your personality and all these things, 
that's not good stepping over people's emotions and principles for the sake of satisfying what you think is right that is not good the super ego is the one that builds these things in you and it is contrary to the end but people often have been able to ignore the super ego aside al islam wants you to if i may use this metaphorically to make sure that the super ego is ignited within you in other words not that your behaviors are shaped by external motives because it's the law and because it's what society feels acceptable or not but because allah is observing you and that's an inner motive that is always with you no matter where you are even if no one is able to see you and you know allah is